Stocks continue to reach new highs, with the S&P 500 jumping nearly 25% so far this year, but not all stocks have benefited from that enthusiasm. In fact, more than 1,500 stocks are within 10% of their 52-week lows, and I've found five stocks that could be too cheap not to buy. In this video, I'll show you two ways to find cheap stocks, two stock signals for uncovering value stocks ready to pop. I'll explain each and then reveal the five stocks to buy that could be too cheap to pass up. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel, and you know we gotta start with that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, stocks are undeniably expensive, even on a growing economy and low interest rates. This chart of the price to earnings ratio, that measure of true stock valuations, shows the 10-year average ratio in that blue dashed line, and you can see the current PE has rarely been higher. In fact, looking at the PE ratio by sector, you get a sense of how expensive some of these stocks have become. Here, the current price to earnings ratio is in dark blue with the 10 year average in green. The broader stock market is 28% more expensive compared to that long term average, but some sectors are even more so. For example, on the far left, the stocks in the consumer discretionary sector trading for 32.8 times PE ratio are 56% more expensive than their 10 year average. Now, if the golden rule in stocks is to buy low and sell high, this is not the way to do it. But I've found a way to find cheap stocks, two technical signals that show you the stocks that are too cheap to ignore and could be ready to run higher. I'll be using the Webull app to start our stock search and then for analysis later. Webull Screener is a perfect mix of fundamental and technical analysis, and you can save your screens for constant stock ideas. For this screen, we're going to be looking for those oversold stocks, those where the price has gone too negative and could be ready to reverse. So we'll scroll down here, and the first signal we'll be filtering is for the KDJ oversold indicator. The KDJ is a technical indicator, a stock signal that measures both the trend direction of a stock and the best time to buy. It consists of three lines, the K, the D, and the J, which represent different price patterns in a stock and help determine if a stock is cheap relative to its past price. Now, like a lot of those technical stock signals, the KDJ oversold isn't going to be right all the time, but it will help you narrow down your list of stocks then to start your research. Back to that stock screener though, and you see filtering for the KDJ oversold still leaves us with over 400 stocks, so I want to narrow the list a little bit more. And for that, we'll filter for this RSI oversold. Now the RSI or relative strength index is another popular technical signal for stocks, one based on the momentum and the trend in a stock price. It's measured on a scale from zero to 100 with anything above 70 being overbought or expensive and anything under 30 represents oversold or cheap. Now just those two filters narrow our list of cheap stocks down to 37 and I can click through to see our list and start researching from there. If I did want to narrow that list further though, another criteria I like here is the ability to filter for only those stocks with buy and strong buy ratings. Now that narrows our list down to seven stocks, a little light here, so I'm going to use that larger list to start our research. I'll leave a link in the description below to check out that stock screener. Use the link to sign up and you'll get two free stocks worth up to $1,000 each when you open an account. And we're going to get into that list of five cheap stocks, but I need you to understand here, we're not just watching these stocks based solely on those stock signals. From that list of 37 stocks that were technically cheap, you want to narrow your list with the fundamental analysis, researching why those stocks are cheap right now. Because honestly, when you're looking at these kinds of value stocks, nine times out of 10, there's going to be a very good reason why the stock price has come down. And whether it's a mistake by management or a shift in the market, investors have sold out of these shares suddenly. Your job then is to just to determine if there's a near-term potential for a rebound and long-term profits. Like a lot of the stocks on this list, Chig, ticker CHGG, is a victim of the sell-off lately in those stay-at-home stocks. The company is a leading online education platform with 6.6 .6 million subscribers and 19 million visitors a month. But the third quarter results were horrible, with a downward revision to the company's full-year guidance to $763 million in revenue, down from $810 million previously. Now that, combined with weakness in enrollments growth, caused the stock to crash by 49% on that day. We're really seeing two problems here for Chegg. One is the drop in demand for all those at-home solutions, especially online learning. Now the other, specific to that education, is that whenever we see a really strong jobs market with, with higher wages, just fewer people choose to go to college. But Chegg still booked 17% enrollment growth in the last quarter and 26% annual growth in services revenue. 
The online academic space is a 102 million student opportunity, and Chegg benefits from that brand recognition and the scale to offer those quality services. Shares now trade for just 5.5 times revenue, down from a high of 20 times last year and just half of the 9.5 times multiple it traded in over the three years through 2019. So, so even that pre-pandemic multiple would take the share 72% higher from here. Now the RSI has dropped to just 20.3, well into oversold territory on this one. This is still a growth stock with strong free cash flow generation and a healthy balance sheet with $1.75 billion in cash against just $1.7 billion in debt. The average analyst price target of $55 each is 88% higher, with 7 of 16 analysts rating a buy or strong buy. Shares of medical device maker Inogen, ticker ING, and are now trading 60% below that 52-week high, and the relative strength index has fallen to 26, under that 30 level for oversold. The company specializes in portable oxygen concentrators, or POCs, with most of its machines under 5 pounds. Inogen sells in 60 countries around the world, with strong growth in its recurring revenue from equipment rentals, growing that service by 32% last year to $28 million and 32,000 patients renting the devices. Of course, sales were hit last year on the pandemic. You know, locked down patients didn't really need a mobile solution, but sales this year are expected back up to $356 million, and, and the balance sheet is pristine here. The company has $245 million in cash and no debt. That means a third of the market value of this stock is backed by cash. This year, the sell-off has been mostly on two factors. First is the change in Medicare that limited the number of patients initially qualifying for benefits. Also though, with the US dollar at a 16-month high, it's impacted the foreign revenue of the company. But this is another one with strong long-term growth. Management estimates the POC penetration at just 21% for US Medicare patients and, and the potential for growth to 72% penetration. Beyond the increase in usage though, we're also seeing a long-term trend to respiratory problems, so more demand for this kind of a device. Shares are now trading for just 2.1 times estimated full-year sales, down from 3.1 times last year and as high as 11 times back in 2017. Just back up to last year's multiple, though, would be almost a 50% upside. The average analyst target of $42 a share is only 23% higher from here, but I think this one has further upside, especially on that long-term growth and the cash strength. Now, the technical analysis we started with to find those cheap stocks is part of a special workshop I put together with Thomas Carvo on stock trading and technical analysis. 35 videos, and more than four hours of instruction on those stock signals you need to know. You'll learn everything from trading timeframes to using those stock charts and finding the trends that send stocks higher. You'll also be able to download a trade journal template along with trade cheat sheets and lots of other bonus material. We just launched the workshop last month and are offering a special 35% discount, more than $150 off to everyone out there in the community. So check out that link I'll leave in the description. This next company, On24, ticker ONTF, just went public this year at the height of its peak. The company is a cloud-based platform enabling businesses to reach customers through virtual events, webinars, and streaming, basically everything that boomed during the pandemic. Now, I do want to address something here though, because I know the comments are coming on this stock and most on this list. If you look at the news on these stocks, on Yahoo Finance or just wherever, all you see are these class action lawsuits suing the company, and it gives you the impression that the stock is just one big scam. Now understand though, what happens here is that investors just buying into the next hot stock, the price crumbles, and then they want to bitch and complain that it didn't make them rich overnight. The real problem is investors just paid way too much for the stock. For example, when it went IPO in February, On24 had reported $157 million in 2020 revenue. It was spectacular growth of 76% from the year before, but investors were paying a price of 20 times sales. Now, sales are still expected to top $203 million this year, which is still solid growth of 30%, but the frenzy has just come out of the stock and it's now trading for 2.5 times those expected sales. Investors are pissed that they lost money, and shyster lawyers are there to take advantage of that, signing up disgruntled investors hoping to get a settlement from the company. Now, the vast majority of these lawsuits are thrown out as frivolous, with absolutely no wrongdoing by management, but there are law firms that live on this, that do nothing but these spammy class action suits, so, so just don't believe everything you see on the internet. Like most of these stocks, though, this is still a growth company with some solid long-term potential. Management estimates a global market of $44 billion for the services, and the customer count is still growing even in that post-pandemic surge. The company reported over 2,000 customers in Q3, which is a slower 3% growth from last year, but look at the growth in those larger customer accounts. 
Customers spending over $100,000 grew by 19% over the last nine months. Now, the shares just entered oversold territory with an RSI of 29, and that two and a half times multiple on the price to sales ratio is very attractive for the next generation cloud services company. Of the seven analyst targets here, five rate the shares a buy or strong buy with a $26 average target or 57% upside from here. Next is another one of the lockdown darlings, Peloton Interactive, ticker PTON, is just recently in oversold territory with an RSI of 25. And like the rest of those lockdown stocks, this one was just too damn expensive and the shares are down 70% from that December peak. I know it sucks to realize that you paid too much, but at its high, this was a $53 billion market cap on just $1.8 billion in sales last year. That is 29.4 times on a price to sales basis. So yeah, a little expensive. Shares are now trading for just 3.5 times this year's expected sales of $4.6 billion, which would be more than double last year's sales. So still some strong growth in this company. Peloton reports 6.2 million users, and it's a unique business with revenue from equipment and subscriptions that, that really gives it that sales growth. The company is also moving beyond bikes with more offerings in strength training, treadmill, and yoga, and it's still just a fraction of that exercise market. In fact, there's a Peloton Guide product release coming next year that looks revolutionary, an AI-enabled device that tracks your movements. Folks, Europe is seeing increased COVID rates heading into the winter, and I have a feeling lockdowns aren't as over as we think they are, so there is some rebound potential here as well. Of the 31 analysts, 15 rate the stock a buy or strong buy with an average target price of $82 a share, up 72% from the recent price. Great Panther Mining, ticker GPL, is by far the smallest on the list at just a $96 million market cap and shares trading for under 30 cents a share. Now that alone doesn't make the stock a good buy, but with the upside to gold prices on inflation over the next year, this could be one of the best miners for a rebound. The company operates gold mines in Mexico, Brazil, and Peru. It grew production last year, but the shares have been sliding on runaway costs with the all-in sustaining cost ballooning 40% from last year to over $1,900 an ounce. Now, much of that was due to issues around the pandemic, and the company recently went through a management change, so I think it can get those costs down over the next year. That combined with just strength in the price of gold, and this could be a good candidate for a bounce. Shares now trade for just 0.46 times sales, down from 1.1 times last year, and a five-year average around two times sales. Now, that's a 58% discount to last year's valuation, and the shares just entered the oversold territory with a 29.4 on the RSI. Just four analyst targets here, but all rate the stock a buy with an average price of $1.08 per share, a potential return of 285%. Check out that stock screener on Weeble and use the link below to get your two free shares of stock worth up to $2,300 when you start investing. You can invest in stocks, ETFs, options, even cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Click on the video to the right for my five favorite short-term investments for 2022. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.